This might actually be working! Oh my god, hey everybody, this is a historic moment. Songbringer stream is actually at 800p today. And I think it can even run this way. What's up, Gooding? I made some tweaks to the settings here in Game Show, the streaming software I use. So hopefully, my code should be clear. Um, when I'm making art, you should be able to see what's going on. And when I play the game, it should be higher res too. What's up, Pedro? How's it going? How's it? How's it going on the with the thesis, man? So even this, like this kind of stuff, you should, it should the screen should be a lot clearer. Well, not right now. Well, I just did that effect, but um, you guys should have a much higher quality stream. And hopefully, it does not go out. The stream doesn't just die because my internet cannot support it. But I think, I think I'm still below a pretty reasonable bit rate here. This is 1600, 1700. I think I should still be able to stream like this at higher res. You found the perfect quote to include? What's that? Uh, so, anyways, yeah. Today I'm working on PlayStation controllers, and hopefully we got some better video and and uh, for you guys on YouTube as well as on the stream right now live as well. You guys should have a much higher quality stream. Uh, oh, and I was running it at 60 frames a second here, which whoops, I can turn that down to 30 while I'm streaming, and it should be even better. Welcome, newest followers, Brandon, Tommy, Darko. Here's the quote, huh? What is this? If we learn from a mistake and become better for it, shouldn't we be rewarded for learning rather than punished for the mistake? Nice. Where does that come from? Where does that quote actually come from? Is that from the movie uh, Indie Game? Or is that uh, some other quote from one of his? Yeah, it's, at high, it's higher quality, but it's 10 frames a second. Yeah. You should still have the full audio quality. This is just uh, being able to see the stream, seeing my code, seeing everything at higher resolution, but um, but lower frame rate. Oh, it's from the game, really? Oh, interesting. Oh, I get it. That kind of makes sense from the from how the game works. Okay. So today I'm working on PlayStation controllers. I got my PlayStation controller in the mail. I'm like, yes! Today I'm working on PlayStation controllers because I'm going to play with this thing. This is I forgot how elegant and awesome a PlayStation controller is. It's so rad. It's like just the right weight. I love the symmetry of it all. I feel like I'm holding the controller of the future here. It's so rad. But anyways, there's a few problems with it. it with the existing code in Songbringer, it wasn't smart enough to recognize the difference between an, an Xbox controller and a PlayStation controller on Windows because they have exactly the same button configurations and stuff. So I'm going to make it smarter now where it uses the vendor string to, and it's going to automatically bind things too. So um, the second you plug in a PlayStation controller or an Xbox controller, it automatically recognizes both of those things and you never ever have to do set any bindings. Only will you actually, only if you use like a, another kind of controller like a, anything else um, like a for example like a Super Nintendo style controller or something like that only then would you be when you get that uh, that one binding screen that Songbringer has so there'll still be that binding screen for people that want to set their bindings manually or reset their PlayStation bindings or whatever but it will just simply automatically recognize the PlayStation and the Xbox controllers out of the box without having to bind anything what's up Arcane welcome 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 Okay, so getting on with this whole automatic bindings, I'm gonna start with uh, I'm gonna start with the Xbox controller actually because I'm more familiar with that, and then I'm gonna create default bindings that go for those, and it will only use those default bindings if uh, the player doesn't have any bindings already. So if they have reset their bindings. Or they're, yeah, if you've reset your bindings and wanted to do it manually, it's not going to overwrite. So let's get on with this.
All right, so I'm starting with the Xbox controller and starting with default bindings. Um, first, we need to get rid of the old binding. Yeah, the old binding system kind of sucks. Uh, let me show you an example. The old bindings for the game, they look like... For, for keyboard, it makes sense. Okay, the key K. But for play, for controllers, it did not make sense. It was based on these codes that change per platform. I was trying to, I was hoping that these would be exactly the same per platform, but every, every different platform has slightly different drivers for how they run gamepads. So these codes always came out different. So I'm gonna base this on a vendor string. So for example, this would be something like this: Xbox controller dot axis one minus or plus or whatever is is key zero zero or whatever. Default bindings, you have no idea how happy I am to hear that I won't be under the pressure of mapping them myself. You cannot have that kind of power. Yes, didn't weren't you the one that suggested having default bindings a while ago? Or was that somebody else? What's up, Boogie? Hey guys. Right, and you would also have something like this Xbox controller dot button one is zero zero and you know what this is gonna be different per platform you did suggest it well it was an excellent suggestion arcane I am I'm excited to be finally doing it and it just illustrates the the difference because when I when I um it illustrated the need for it to me when I got my PlayStation controller and I put it in the game and it didn't work right away, and I'm like, you know what? This sucks. It should just, it should just know. If, if the Xbox controller always has the same amount of buttons, the PlayStation controller always has the same amount of buttons, same axes, so it should just work, you know. Okay, so it's gonna have to be something like. I think I might need to actually move bindings. into their own section maybe because if you play on a different platform well maybe not I'll save that for last that's a, yeah that's a definitely a meta thing this is like this is totally above everything else so I need to do something like this though to make it clear what's bound yeah I know you're still waiting for the steam controller I gotta get one of those too but uh, I started with the PlayStation controller because it's a little more popular more people have PlayStation controllers than they have steam controllers these days so, you know what? I could. I'm totally assuming that that might. If you can find some data on that, uh, this different that counters that, please let me know, and I'll just order a Steam controller right now. But yes, that will, That's the next thing on my list. I got to get a Steam controller too, and test that out. Figure out why the why the D-pad doesn't work. I have figured out why the D-pad does not work for the PlayStation controller on on Mac though, and that's because its, it's driver is not quite bringing back the POV, which is the D-pad. What's up, Zanger? Welcome, you guys. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I'm working on PlayStation controllers and automatic bindings right now. So, right, Xbox button one would be whatever, two, zero, or something like that. But first, it's, I don't even need to do that just yet. I can make this smarter with default bindings before I even, even do that part. Uh, but let me, I think I have to check in my existing code. I do, yeah. This file right here, I tweaked on Windows and got the vendor string to work. So let me take out one little thing I didn't need. W string is not actually a header. Don't even need W string. String gives you W string. Did you know that? Do you want the Sombria proprietary controller? It has a map built in. It has a it has a holographic map. You put you press the Songbringer's proprietary controller button in the middle, and it's the map button, and it, it's a it's a holographic view of the world that you're currently in. It costs a thousand dollars though. It's quite an expensive controller, but definitely worth it for playing Songbringer really really well. I'll tell you, you're gonna get the fastest speed runs ever. Okay, uh, I don't think I need to save this debug info.
It's worth it. <laughs> right? Like R2-D2 style holograms? So worth it. Why are we even talking about whether it's worth it or not? We all just know it is instinctually. I can save this, I guess, for a moment. Let's see, this is uh, Windows. Windows joysticks. Only 1K? <laughs> it's only a K. I'm going to stash this data I collected here. Um, hmm. right, let's call that log controllers. I can stash my Mac results here later if I want. <clears throat> okay, now I think this is ready to check in. I got some new scripts. This is super sweet. Oh man, I gotta mention this. Yeah, I don't buy cheap things. <laughs> oh man. Yeah, I gotta mention this. This is so great. If anybody out there is doing their own game development, all right. I don't. I don't. I don't know if anybody out there is also a game developer. I'm joking. I know almost all you guys are. But anyways, um, I got a triple boot going on here with this this Mac laptop I have, and it is so valuable. For making a cross-platform game if you're if you want to make a cross-platform game that runs on windows mac and linux i highly recommend getting your own triple boot set up it is so convenient and i just found out that i can actually write to ntfs drives from a mac and it's just as as simple as adding a single line of something to your your initialization code and everything to your system so easy and then I can write to files on Windows. So I got these scripts that basically copy over my files to Windows. It makes it so easy to recompile on Windows. Um, but anyways, I just wanted to shout out that encouragement to everybody. Like, get your triple boot set up. You really need that for cross-platform game development. Okay, this is a bug fix for Windows that gets the vendor string. I think I prefer the less bandwidth, more FPS version. Really? Well, people have been complaining a lot about the old, the quality being bad. Uh, I'll tell you what though, Pedro, next time, maybe I can try, okay, the settings I have right now, um, I can't believe it's, this is, this is a miracle though, Pedro, this is a miracle, this is even working. 800p, I'm actually, I'm at 800p, I, we used to be at 480, I think, or 640 or something like that, just every, something below 720. So, but anyways, I could try going down to 720p and then trying to pump the frame rate back up to 15. But I'm not going to do that now on today's stream because I want to see if this does work at 800p for a whole stream. Because I've been, I've been, I've been fearing the whammy here for like the whole stream, all 13 minutes of this. I'm just waiting for the stream to die. So anyways, if we can get through a whole stream with it like this, this is going to say a lot for for that. But thank you for sharing that you like the more frames. I'll try that next time. I'll try 720p with the higher frame rate. And that might be the best of both worlds. Then we could have, you know, at least high HD videos for YouTube and um, and the same frame rate as it was before. Which would also be a miracle if it can actually get those, get, get all that and jam it into only 1500 kbps. I will be impressed with today's algorithms. Way to go, encoders. Way to go, coders that wrote the encoders. Yeah, yeah. So I've looked at this like three times. This is all good. This is a nice little fix. What's this top bit again? Oh, yeah. God vendor strings on Windows. Sweet. And now, default bindings. Let's do this. If it recognizes a controller and it doesn't have any bindings already, it will automatically do some bindings. Coder coders, yes. Encoder coders are coding. 
completely Hmm, all these I could use for mapping as well. Uh, but, so what? How would, how would I recognize that we have no bindings yet for a controller? I guess it would be here when we're setting up the controller. It creates the joystick, it gets the force feed back for it, it stores the current input type. Saves a device hash. This is no longer going to be necessary, but yeah. Uh, set automatic bindings if we have none. So we need to detect whether we have any bindings for this yet. You prefer, Boogie prefers the quality over the quantity. All right. Well, that's good to know, Boogie. It's good to know. I'm glad, I'm glad you like the quantity over the quality. Hopefully we can have both for tomorrow. It will be a slightly, I'll try it tomorrow, it'll be a slightly less, less of the quality <clears throat> on the screen because it'll be 800, it'll go down from 800p to 720p, which is not a native, it's not, it's not like, it doesn't match the ratio of my Mac perfectly, so it's gonna create a little bit more blurry code, I think, but, <clears throat> It might be a higher frame rate. So anyways, I'll try it today at 800p, 10 frames a second. Tomorrow we'll try 720p, 15 frames a second. And if it works, then um, then we'll have two choices and I'll take some feedback from everybody, what everybody prefers. And what everybody is the biggest preference for what people like, I'll just keep streaming that way. But no matter what, it'll be higher quality streams. I don't think we need buttery smooth PC mastery 60 frames at a programming stream. Code is more interesting. Okay. Good to know, Arcan. Good to know. I wonder what it would be like though doing um, you know, art and stuff like that. Like if I'm in here, you know, drawing and stuff. La 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 la. I'm drawing. Ninety percent is static. The most tech, yeah, it really is, huh? Right, it is. It is. Good, ar good arguments in favor. In favor of the way it is right now. Because this is this is probably the best I'm going to be able to get the stream um, for for the frame rate I'm at and everything like that and being able to work it with my net internet speeds. This is the best quality I can get you guys. And I, I tried a whole stream yesterday just to make sure this worked. I didn't, it wasn't a stream. It was just a recording of a video, but I tried a whole video yesterday and I found out that this one little setting really makes the quality better. So it was this thing here with keyframe aligned. Oh my God. It makes the, it makes, yeah, this video, I'm, I'm, I promise you, is way better than it would be if I didn't have this keyframe aligned. It would be constantly glitching on you guys, and it, it like goes from good quality to glitching to this bad quality all the time. So this is a sweet thing right here. And then this too, I, I upped the quality of the encoding to six rather than one. So it was at ultra fast encoding, and now it's at it's, it's medium encoding. I tried very slow encoding, but it was actually so slow that it dropped frames and stuff. So I think this medium encoding is the best quality we're going to be able to get there. But anyways, I'm thinking about you guys. I'm trying to think about what it's like from your guys' perspective to watch these streams. Not only live streams, but also you guys on YouTube uh, that are watching it uh, later on and stuff. So anyways, I'm thinking about you guys. And eventually we'll have some, the settings dialed in to the, to the best it can be with the given resources and all that. So I'm pretty sure we're gonna call input get binding. I don't know what's up with Xcode's um uh 
autocomplete here, but the first time you run Xcode and do it's autocomplete, it's just like slow as hell. But then you give it a minute and it's all fast. At least that's lately, the current version 7.3 of Xcode. It's like really slowing me down here. It's hampering like crazy. But it'll probably kick into being fast here in a second. Either that or I'll just re reset Xcode. And I don't know. Come on, Xcode. Input. Get binding. Right, so we need a code to get all the bindings. If we want to see if we have any bindings for this controller. So we would just loop over all the buttons, the codes, and all that. Or we could use has binding. Where do we get bindings in the rest of this function here, or this file? When we're using values, that's right. So we're sifting through the latest values. Values is a map of, oh right, your input codes to the value. Mm -hmm. So it, it's slipping over the current values. It sees if, if they're bindings. Blood! What's up, blood? Welcome, welcome, welcome. Hold on. I got to turn my beans off. I'm cooking beans. And I'm back. All good. Right on, man. Thanks for sharing your all the bugs you found recently in Songbringer, man. Thank you, thank you. There's a lot. There's a lot of bugs getting fixed. You're just playing for four hours right now. Awesome, man. The new version is coming out. It's gonna have some rather cool stuff. There's six buttons you can now use. Six buttons for bindings. All the bindings and the inputs a lot better, and the menu for your equipment's a lot better too. How'd it go, man? How'd your play go? So the new menu here, you can you hold down buttons. Oh, this broke all of a sudden. Or wait, did it never work with controllers? Hold on, maybe it works with the keys on the keyboard. Oh no, I broke this all of a sudden. <laughs> Why do I break everything? Nice, pretty good. Awesome, man. Okay, so I'm working on automatic bindings today. You'll never have to you'll never have to bind a PlayStation or an Xbox controller. Um you can overwrite your bindings though. If you want to manually bind your, your Xbox controller, you can always overwrite. Okay, I think I want to create a method inside input that loops loops over a given uh, like a starting point for a code. So we've got set binding, get binding, has any bindings, has custom bindings. I want to see static bool has bindings for uh, a given code, which it will take the top half of that code and get its its device ID out of that, and then loop over all the possible codes. Or yeah, I guess it will just look at, look at the top sixteen bits of this right here. 
So if we have any bindings for a given code, we're gonna need that right here. You notice one thing that's kind of janky? What's that? What'd you notice? Has bindings, has bindings, where is that? Has any bindings? There. Sometimes in a room in the dungeon, all the enemies target Jib, which makes it very easy room. Like the brains. Oh. Oh, and it happened in the boss room. Really? He was consistently targeting Jib. That's... Okay, thank you, man. That's a great bug find. Let's add this to the Trello list. Uh, there's some code already in there, which is supposed to make it so that enemies constantly are changing their target. So, like, maybe maybe that for a while they'll lock on to Jib, but they're supposed to um, change their target away from Jib every once... Or just not change it away from Jib, but choose a new target every once in a while. So, there's something up with that. Bosses, for example, should just never, ever... They should always be more smart, so... Um, All right, there, I got this added. Yeah, like a boss, for example. Yeah, see, I added that to some code, too. There is some already some code that does that. It's supposed to be if ran smart. So basically, if, it, if a boss, if or any kind of enemy is really intelligent, it's not supposed to target Jib. It's supposed to target the main hero, Rock. So, um... Yeah, there's already code in place for that. I just got to tweak it to make make it work right, basically. So that shouldn't be too difficult of a bug to fix. Uh, all right, has bindings. I'm gonna loop over all the current bindings and look for the top. Look at the top 16 bits and see if it matches this code. And if so, return true. Fair enough, first is the code. Let's make a little mask here. Uh, another thing is I think you should balance the dungeon enemies a bit. Most of them are too easy and the balloons are very hard. Yeah. Oh, I will. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks. Uh, I've, uh, received that feedback, uh, before that those guys are a bit hard and everything is also a little bit easy. So, um, I do need to work on tweaking the overall flow of all the enemies, but I'm waiting until I actually start working on that again. Um, I've, you know, I've got a lot of, a lot of little things left to do to kind of, to cement here to create a grid foundation. And then I'm actually gonna do enemies and bosses and finish all the dungeons. And basically that will be, I'm pretty sure that will be like next month. I'll be working mostly on enemies and bosses. And then this month, I'm just gonna finish up all the little elements like the story elements and things like that. So the beginning of the game is really excellent. And, um, and basically the game is feature complete. That's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to get the game to be mostly feature complete and then throw in all the enemies and the bosses and that's the perfect time to go tweaking all the difficulties of the enemies and the bosses is right then when I'm adding the other bosses and, and enemies. Yeah, thanks, Vlad. Thanks for letting me know. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. So this should 
this should check if we have any bindings already for that. All right, so let's go back to the input controllers. And let's see if we have, if we don't have any bindings for something. For whatever code this is. What code is this? Um, it's get button code. No, not button code. It's just yeah. But I guess button code would be it. If that takes a joystick event arg. Axis code will work. No, I need a friggin I need a friggin general code function. I found one screen where I could use a cactus. Is it because I didn't look hard enough or there's just none of them yet? No, there's a lot of them. Um but you uh um a lot of them aren't are actually hooked up to show secrets yet. So the only way they currently work is to show you cracks um, in the walls where you could bomb places. Um, yeah, but so the reason the reason you would want to use a cactus without looking for secrets is that one, you get a um, you get a, a one of your health back, and also you are invincible for a while. So there's a lot of benefits. It's a multifaceted item. But, but secondly, there's going to be a lot more places where it reveals secrets. I just haven't actually implemented the code yet. So, for example, it shows bombable walls, but it doesn't show you that you can uh, bomb a wall in the dungeons yet. There's a lot of places in the dungeons where you can bomb walls, and it, there's no way to know other than bombing it at this point. And there's also other kinds of secrets, too. You can walk through some walls now, and that is also something that the cactus doesn't reveal. And maybe the cactus shouldn't reveal every kind of secret. I'm not exactly sure whether it should or it shouldn't. Or maybe there's some kind of random chance for a, a cactus to actually reveal a secret or no, I don't know. That would kind of that would kind of make it not as useful at all. Anyways, um Yeah, sometimes you might not notice the crack, but also there's other kind of oh, another thing is a lot of the overworld secrets now you can you can there's bushes too that are um that are also secrets, and so the bushes aren't showing up either. So the bushes can't you know, there's no way to tell. So anyways, there's a lot more secrets in the game. I'm not exactly sure what which ones should be revealed. Um, and I'm still writing code to reveal. There's still more stuff to add. Yeah, so sorry about that. As the game gets more complete, using cactuses will become a lot more uh, useful. Right now, the cactus for finding secrets in particular is not as useful as it will be when the game's all said and done. Yeah. Okay, let's make a generic code function. Here's the get device hash. So here is a get generic code. We take a uint16t device hash, doesn't matter anything else. We start with the min, no, we don't even need this. We just return device hash shifted up 16. That's all it is. Cool. Now we've got a generic code function, and we can say input has bindings for this get generic code for the device hash. If we don't have any bindings, here's where we're going to set a breakpoint. We should be hitting this with the Sony controller. 
or wait, no, did I add bindings for it? I might have added bindings for it. I had a fun idea, but it's probably too much work. I was thinking that the dudes on the ship can give you a side quest, which can add a bunch of hours to the game. Side quests, yeah. Uh, there are a couple planned already. You know the guys that there's a bunch of crashed bikes throughout the world? There's going to be an NPC or two of the scouts. So you're when you the scouts are all the people that's you know started scouting after at the beginning of the game. There'll be a cutscene explaining all that. But yeah, so there's it's a couple NPCs where there'll be at least one or two different side questy type things you can do. What's up, Jonah? And and for the DLC, which I which I'm hoping becomes a reality at, at some point. Um, for that's a great thing for DLC, right? Just add more side quests, boom. So, oh, Jonah, what's up, man? We're, we're, I'm working on uh, PlayStation controllers. I just got mine in the mail. I'm pretty excited about it. It's so sleek and awesome. And uh, and automatic binding, so you don't have to bind Xbox or um, PlayStation, and eventually the Steam controller once I get one. So, okay, we should hit this. But maybe not, because I actually might have binded stuff. Binded. Yeah, we didn't hit that. Okay, if I take away the bindings though for this. What's this? We don't need this. Swords. Swords! We don't need swords. I think 6E. Yeah. Let's get rid of all those. We're doing automatic bindings today. We don't need the manual bindings for PlayStation controller. PS4? Yeah, this one's a PS4 controller, yeah. Nice! <laughs> nice, bud. That's so cool. What level was that? You got pretty far. Man, look how many hearts you got. You got eight hearts. Or eight teeth. You got a lot of courage. <laughs> that was just a... That looks like it was a big-ass room that you just cleared. It didn't... Oh, man, it didn't... Didn't break right here. I guess we'll set a break point like there. Okay, stepping into this method, or device hash is 111, which when we return that, make it a code, what's that in hex? 6F, not 6E. All right, so we gotta get rid of the 6E and the 6F. Both those. You're on the ninth dungeon, wow, nice. Playing through all the way. Wow. I hope the game gets a lot more fun in the next few months and just, you know, once there's once all the bosses are complete and the enemies and all the features are done, I think it's gonna be an even more complete game and it should be more fun. So now our device hash or I mean our code. Yeah, 6F. All right, so we're stepping into the has bindings method. And the mask and the code, the code should be exactly the same. Let's view that as hex, make sure it's still 6F. Yeah, and the mask, if you view that as hex, it's just going to be FF on the top. Cool. Now, looping through these bindings, it's going to loop through everything and see if any of these match the binding. It shouldn't. Return, let's see what return, false, good. So it did not find any bindings, and that means it's gonna step into here, where we're gonna set some automatic bindings. And you got all the map, nice. Nice. Oh yeah, I know, I know. How's it going though, by the way? How's everything going with the uh, with the whole Google thing and everything you guys are working on? Uh, okay, so we're gonna set some some bindings automatically.
we've already got an input type keyboard Xbox PlayStation I'm gonna make this PlayStation a little bit smarter because on on Windows the vendor string I was getting back was actually wireless controller if vendor is exactly wireless controller that's gonna count as a, as a PlayStation controller I think this should be first because of that wireless controller okay so there we got the input type so we might as well set the automatic bindings based on a controller type oh that's right it's next week huh oh please yeah okay um Vlad, will you please remind me about that? Like when you, oh, just send me an email too. You got to have my phone number, let's connect and everything. And so you can text me or whatever, what's going on. Or or you can always just tweet me or email me too. But probably it's faster to just uh, text me or whatever. And then, uh, yeah, we'll hook up and have a beer if you can. And just, re just remind me to, try and remind me the day in advance. So I can plan if you're going to be possibly available the next day or whatever. Then we can. That'd be probably be best for me because I. It does take me a minute to get into the city, so I have to plan my day around going to San Francisco that day. Rigged boogie one. Hey Siri, what's up, man? Trying to think of some game ideas. Rust game engine stuff working. Sweet, dude. Nice. What's the? How is the Rust game engine? And what is the Rust game engine you're working with? I think all I need is a map that takes uh, an input type and then is filled up with a whole bunch of bindings. You just don't know which day yet. Okay, cool. All right, nice. Nice, nice, nice. Uh... This takes an input type. Oh, just input type. And on the other side, it has an input, a vector of input bindings. Bindings type. These are default bindings. Well, we got a parallel ECS working along with the semi working render. Right on. Two very, very important basic steps. Nice. Okay, and let's see if we can bind, say, like input type controller Xbox. We'll start with that and then mapping that to a vector of bindings. There's going to be our vector, and let's fill it up with at least one binding. I think in, oh, oops, what did I do? I do not want to run instruments. Uh, input CPP. I think I do some default, yeah, here we go. Vector, input, default binding. Oh, I can just create a default binding like that. Input, vector of input default binding. What exactly is a default binding again? It's a private to input. This just has a code and a binding type. Oh no, we don't need that. We don't need that at all. We can just go default binding. What is it? Creates with the code. Okay. Oh, right, but the binding is a make pair of button index, player index. Oh, yeah, those are so easy. Okay. 
So bindings. If we have an Xbox, I want to be able to bind like button one and stuff. So make pair. Oh, this needs to be a code to a. I guess I'm gonna have to use generic code. So default binding it is. Input, let's see if we can map of default binding. And, uh, I think that's private and it's not liking it. Okay, let's make that public. Okay, so while it's recompiling that, I should be able to start putting together a list of bindings. So I'm going to use the default binding. Let's use that. Using namespace OIS, using input default binding. Wait, wait, wait. Default binding. So now I can just type default binding throughout this function, I mean, file. Default binding. And we're going to need all these bounds somehow. And we don't need anything to do with key codes. This is just K gamepad. I think we just want access. Access one pause. Okay, what's the problem with this? Use of undeclared default binding, I just did. Just said what it was. What? Wet, 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 wet. Why didn't it like this using statement? Oh, using declaration can't refer to a class member. You gotta do it this way. Dumbass. <laughs> Wouldn't it be funny if your, if your IDE just talked to you and called you a dumbass? Thanks, Xcode. Thanks for calling me a dumbass. I feel better about myself. Great, so that works. We got a default binding. Boom. Let's, uh, let's comment everything else out here and see if we can get this working with that one single binding. Axis one pauses, button up, player zero. All these should be player zero. No, no. There will be eventually jib, and jib should also be automatic. Gosh, I should just do jib this weekend, huh? I should do jib like right now so you can control jib with the second controller. So let's see if we can find 
Um, some default bindings. Mm. Okay, default bindings dot find. We're gonna look for key type, which is um, our generic code, I think. Let's make a generic code right now. If we don't have anything for the code, then we're gonna make a code. Oh yeah, we need to make a code. We are gonna need to make these all codes. But what are we looking for here? The input type. That's right. Find find the input type. No, and that's an auto it. Okay, it is that. If it is not equal to k default. Exams coming up again. Is have exams all the time. So if, that, if we found some bindings, let's use them. So I'm going to loop over everything in it. I don't like exams. Who does? Oh, what am I getting? So for auto for every pair in it second is a vector of default bindings, right? So the p, p dot first is what? Three exams this month? Well, there it goes. P.binding or P.code. Yeah, good luck, Jonah. Tell your professors to stop giving you so many exams, too. Jeez. So it would just be input set binding. And we would get a code. So it would be like. Ooh, this would all depend on if it's an axis or what have you. I guess this should be. Oh, it's just a it's just a merge. It's just a merge of this code and that code. Yeah, it's just code or p dot code. And the button is p dot binding dot First, which one is it? First or second? P dot binding dot second. I'm not exactly sure which one's which here. I gotta check that. Input H has a binding type, which is button, comma player. That's right. So button is first. Button player. Alright, good. I kept it in order. I think that should work. I'll set a breakpoint here where it sets that one binding. If we get to this point and it sets it correctly, then I'll, I'll have confidence this will work for the other 15 or so other bindings we need for defaults. And then I just got to know which, which things are bound the way they are already. So the P is code 1000, which is, all right, that's, uh, yeah, that's correct. That's the first bind, that's the axis one or whatever. And our binding is zero, zero, players, button zero, player zero. Let's see what happens when I, when I merge that code with the existing code and set a binding. We've got a code total upper 16 bits or it's just 6f but the lower 16 bits is 3ef which i think matches my existing bindings a little bit three yeah here we got a zero three eb three ea blah 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 so those are yeah it's matching those codes nicely i think this is working rugged bunny you made your first shader 
That's right, Rocket Bunny. Yeah. Oh, that's so cool. Dude, what does it do? What does it do? Did you change a pixel? What'd you do? Change the color? That's so awesome, Rocket Bunny. You're 13 years old, right? And you, you just learned shaders already? Shaders are like today's wizardry, man. If you can if you can keep going and keep learning shaders, just that will give you an edge. Wow. I'm impressed. I'm really impressed, bro. I'm excited for you. As always. All right, now I just got to figure out which one's positive, which one's negative, and all that. I think it was axis one and two and all that. Oh. I should just undo. Undo, undo. I'm just going to copy my Windows saves. Wait, wait. First, I'm going to copy my saves to current. And then I'm going to copy my Windows projects, Windows saves to here. Because that one had my old bindings. I think I might need to touch it. Touch saves. Rebuild. It turns all the colors to grayscale. Nice. Not only is that a is that a really educational thing to know how to do, but or you know, and also empowering. But secondly, it's actually useful too. Turning things to grayscale can be a very cool effect for like when the player dies, or sometimes an entire game mechanic or an entire game can be written in grayscale. All right, so now I've got these default bindings back. I can see what, what's what. Because if I run it, I've got I got my debug mode on for my controller, so I can see what axis is what for the Xbox controller, the way it's bound currently. Okay, so here I'm using axis three, positive, negative. So Axis three negative is left. What's up? Up is four negative. Down is four positive. Okay, let's get those two in. Button up, axis four negative. Positive, four negative. Wait, four negative, right? Four negatives up, four positive down. Four positive down. Yep. Get the original color. Texture 2D Game Maker. This is similar to how it looks in. Uh, for me too, with Coco Studio X, you're using GLSL. Original color, uh huh. Over three. Nice, and you kept the existing alpha. Good job, Rocket Bunny. Good job. Oh, wait, that's just up. I also want. Down. What's down on the keypad thing? That is button two. Button two is down, button one is up. Oh my god, this is gonna be different for Mac and Windows, huh? Well, shit. Button two is down, button one is up, button three is left, four is right. Hmm. 
I might have to sort this by platform. All right, so let's do left, right. That's <laughs> Amsterdamian. Amsterdamian-ish. Amsterite. Amsterdizian. <laughs> Uh, axis three, I think, was axis three negative was left. And also button three, I believe. <laughs> uh. Londoner, yeah. That's what we're called too from Oakland in Oakland, California. Oaklanders. Or if you're a fan of football, we would be the Raiders. All right, so right was three positive. And button four, I believe. Okay, so I want to check. I want to test all these one more time. Make sure I'm not. I got this right. Outlander, Highlander. Three, three, yep. Four is right. One is up. Two is down. Three is left, four is right, one is up, two is down. There can only be one. One is four negative, four positive. Four negative is up, four positive is down. Three negative is left, three positive is right. Three negative is left, three positive is right. Four negatives up, four positives down. Okay. We got window or Mac. Mac Xbox controller defaults. All right, so now for A, B, X, and Y. Dude, what is, oh, I'm like, why is the, why is it burning my CPU up here? It's because I got it on 30 frames a second. I had it on 60. Boogie in! Uh, <laughs> boogie ins! From the land of Boogie, where everybody dances all day long. All right, so let's see what A, B, X, and Y are. And L and R. All right, A is button 12, B is button 13, 12, 13, 14, 15. Hopefully this is 16, no, that's nine. Nine and 10 are the L and R. So we're talking 12 through 15. What in A? Let's 
So I'm, for some reason, Song Reader burns my GPU. I smell burnt electronics when playing it. It's a feature. Uh, really? Is it really doing that? Well, um, you could turn it down. Just go to your saves. Go to your saves and change your max FPS and turn it down to 30. <laughs> Rocket buddy, BC Warrior time. Also, Vlad, you can turn off a few things if you want to disable the quality. You can change uh, no blur. Set that. Set no blur to one. And no fog. No blur is the biggest one. No blur will help a lot. No reflection is also one that will help a lot to to decoy. And I'll I will add some kind of setting eventually in the in the menu for making it lower quality, so you don't have to worry about setting these manually. Yeah, so that was no blur, no reflection, and also max FPS. All these are settings we can use to make it not so intensive on your CPU or your GPU. Oh, the seeds they were shown right here, right? Booby, sexual nipple, secrets jumpers. I saw a really cool one today, uh, Slayer. I was like, yes, yeah, Slayer. Such a good one. So button 13, 14, and 15. This is button A, B, D, X, and Y. L and R. These were 9 and 10. Eva G. Whoa. I know, it must be. Well, that's weird. I wonder why it is because it runs it runs fine on my um, on my Mac, which which the CPU my fan turns on for like any of the smallest little games. So I'm I'm impressed that uh, Songbringer is actually making your GPU do something. I'll work on optimizing the game some more though. And yeah, don't be sorry for being direct, man. I appreciate you being direct. I pretty I appreciate everyone. Always being direct makes the world simpler, in my humble opinion. Let's see what uh, select and start are. Select is button six. Start is button five. Starts button five. Seems like these got out of order, but you know, they're the ones that designed the controller. Select start. The optimization never ends, it's true. Hey, at least you're not playing the game from like three months ago. That thing wasn't as optimized as it is now. Okay, so this should work now. If I, if I turn off all my bindings for the Xbox controller, both of these, I'm gonna stash these in a text made document. And then, okay, so now I have no, let's turn off all bindings, how about that? Let's just get brave all the way off. And let's see if it binds some stuff automatically. This will be an epic moment right here. Automatic bindings. Okay, here I am. I'm trying the Xbox control. Oh, it works. I didn't set a single binding. Oh, sweet. The D-pad even works too. So I got all these axes right, seems like. You know what? I think I'm gonna make this code smarter right away and just just like recognize that it's uh, Windows. Wait, so Windows versus I need to do some stuff to make this different for Windows and Mac because I'm I know for a fact that the Xbox controller is different 
and how it presents itself, its driver and all that on Windows versus Mac. And I know the PlayStation's also different, you know? So I need different default settings for different platforms. But so far, this is excellent. This is like all working, the D-pad as well as the, um, the axes. I don't need this five, six axis, which is like those. And I'm not using the trigger buttons neither. But that's because the game's not designed. The game's only designed for six buttons. I gotta get rebinding to work. I wonder what the hell happened here. Well. Okay, let's uh I'm gonna do the default bindings for PlayStation next. Or wait, now maybe I'll make this cross-platform. Douchebag pad. <laughs> So Jonah 1930 points. See, it's not rigged. Did they finally make the PS4 controller compatible with Windows? Yes, they did actually, Boogie. Um, I read okay, so I didn't I didn't expect this at all, but I plugged in my PlayStation 4 controller brand new. I had never ever done anything with it. I plugged it in on Mac, worked fine out of the box. Plugged it in on Windows, worked fine out of the box, dude. I'm on Windows 10. So maybe that's why, but um, yeah, it worked completely fine without me having to j download any kind of special driver or anything. Um, I think it's I think they might have done some kind of new Windows driver for it, or maybe just that Sony upped their game and actually got their driver working better on Windows. Because um, yeah, I did see that thing, the, the DS4 Windows app or whatever. I even saw a website, I was looking at it. And this website was telling me, yeah, you're going to have to get DS4 driver, blah, blah, blah. But it just worked. I didn't even have to install that. I think I will in, in anyways because I'm going to install that DS4 driver thingy or whatever anyways just so I, I can know if it changes the way the buttons are all laid out because it might actually change that. And then I would have to write two different kinds of default bindings. Yes, there is an actual official PS4 driver from Sony. Yeah. Hey, what's up, Saladongs? P.S. Hi. Ahoy, man. All right. Uh, how about instead of basing it on input type, I base it on a string. So I would have a bunch of strings, like it would be, if for, for Xbox, I would have Xbox win and Xbox Mac. So that's where this string would belong right here. And then I could have, I could have different default bindings for basically any platform and any kind of device or whatever. And that would also make it so if there ever was a controller that actually had exactly the same buttons and stuff, on every platform, it, you would only have to write one string for it. Okay, I think this is a good way to go. We'll make these strings. Rig with the explosives! Ah! So this is Xbox Mac. I'm gonna condense these a little bit. Should I? Is that right? Is it too dense? I guess it's not too dense. It's all right. Okay, now I'm gonna start another one for PlayStation Mac. PlayStation controller on a Mac. Here's what it's gonna do. I'm gonna need a function actually that that gives that takes a input type and gives me a string. Eh, 
And this is this should be a cross. This should be I, I should be able to use this from just about anywhere. So I'm gonna put this as a method of input. So I've got like get input type and all that. Here it is, input type. Get input type, set input type. I want another method, static string, get input type, string. That's gonna make it special. It's gonna be different for each platform. Why is this flagging this as an error? What is wrong with you? Well, I'll start writing the method. All right, so if we're on Mac, we got, yeah, it's gonna be a whole different, whole different set of code for Mac, Windows, and Linux. Over the next couple days, I'm gonna try and set up a component architecture system thingy. Nice. Good, Rocket Bunny. Oh my God, you're really just progressing. That's so great to hear. Oh my God, your whole game development life is gonna be so much easier than other people's lives. You're, you're understanding such important things that, you're, that will make you a more rapid game developer. More rapidly as well. You will, you will, quicker, you will get to becoming a rapid game developer quicker than, than others will because you're using such excellent foundations, foundational tools and stuff. I'm proud of you, man. It's awesome. I wish I was that smart when I was 13. Uh, right. Game. Some examples of how to check. Here we go. CC target platform. What's up, baby? Well, I'll be emptying them soon and putting the food away. Okay. Hmm. So on Windows, well, on Mac, I'll start with Mac. Else, and if I guess we can switch. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I like how you spelled that. Switch the current inputs type. Current input type. Otherwise, return nothing. All right, so we're gonna have case k input type keyboard. This is um, let's make that universal there. K input type keyboard is always just key. It's cross platform. Default break. And otherwise, the controllers are the ones that get custom. Will I keep streaming after Songbringer? I can't tell you what I will do after Songbringer because I don't know what Songbringer will actually end up like. If it's a financial success, it will be 
Um, the beginning of a new era for me as a game developer. I'll actually make more games, of course. Uh, if Songbringer financially fails, I'll have to get a job, so my next video game will actually take longer. Um, so you get, I don't know how, how that'll work, Rocket Bunny. If I if I don't if Songbringer doesn't succeed, um, then I'll have to get a job, and I basically won't be able to stream. But I will continue the game, the Songbringer six series, no series, no matter what, for because I think it's worth it. You know, even if the even if the first one is a financial failure, then I think that it's still a big enough world and has enough potential that maybe the second or the third one could succeed. So anyways, no matter what, Songbringer will succeed, will continue for a while, the, the series of video games I kind of have planned. Um, and as far as streaming goes, I don't know. It'll totally depend on finances. Maybe I could actually make money from streaming. I don't even know. I, sh I don't even know, man. We'll see what the future brings, man. What is success for you? That's a great question, Boogie. I'm glad you asked it in such a way because... Uh, I believe success is different for all of us, of course. For for me, success is simply just um, being able to pay for a few important things. Like, we're, are we got a wedding coming up? I, I need to be able to pay for that, and uh, we want to have a baby, so I want to have I want to have money for that too. So those are the, like the two most important things to me. But like, if I could get those two things paid for and enough money to fund like two years of developing the next game then I think that would be a success. So basically it, it, it adds up to like less than, like it adds up to around like $80,000. If Songbringer makes $80,000 or more total, then no, no, that's not counting taxes and everything. If you count taxes and you count um, Steam's cut, then I need, then Songbringer needs to make $160,000. Uh, so that would be success for me. $160,000 total. And then that brings home a net Net would be half that, 80. So anyways, 80 would be enough to pay for all those little things. Everybody give a 150 euro tip. <laughs> you don't have to do that. You don't have to do that. This game will succeed on its own or it won't. Let's see what it does, you know? But I do appreciate all your help and thank you for all you guys' support, really. it's it's It would suck creating this game alone. And so it's nice to have uh, this, your support in what time span though? That's a good question. It would have to make that in the first like six months. And if if your game does, your game almost always these days makes most of its money in the first month. So I'm really not so concerned about that. I'm pretty sure it will probably make at least half that in the first month if it's going to. Do I ever see myself getting bored with Songbringer? Sure, of course. You're always going to get bored with things eventually, you know? Um... And that's great because the second you you get bored with something, you're 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 actually revealing to yourself that you're excited about something else. It's not that you're bored with something; it's that you're excited about something else. So yes, of course, there will be a time when I'm like, I don't want to do any more song rear because I want to do this or that. And at that moment, we'll see what that other thing is. It'll be exciting to find out. Um. So yeah, this one will be uh, Xbox Mac. This is like a string. And this one will be PlayStation Mac. Xbox Mac, PlayStation Mac. What other in input controller types do we have? MISC. Hold on, my thing's beeping. Okay, so I think miscellaneous controllers aren't going to have a specific string just yet. Is it Elif? I think it is Elif, huh? CC target platform is Windows. Oh, good night, blood. See you, man. So this is going to be Xbox Win. PlayStation win. I'm doing this individually per platform, per controller type, because some of them will be different. Like for example, a certain platform, I might be able to just get away with PlayStation or whatever. OK. 
Okay, now I got these specific codes. I can use these. What's cooking? I got some beans cooking, man. Beans and rice. I eat a lot of beans and rice. They're inexpensive and they are quite healthy. If you're cooking them yourself, getting some whole grains, whole beans, <laughs> you got some good food. All right, so this is finding a different kind of type, but we want to refine. Um, type string is input get input type string because we've set the input type string. No, we haven't. Damn it. Oh well, I need to make this a more generic method. Another recompile. Here we go. Input type string based on an input type. Duh. Should have just done that for the beginning. Switch type. Ramen is your superfood? Nice. Ramen. So this input type is that. And then we're going to find the type string. And then set all its bindings. And we probably need to do a game like flush save game or whatever here. I'll save that for later. Cool, it looks like it's working. So what do we got here? What do we got for bindings right now? We got nothing except for keys bound. So I'm gonna run this again, and this time it should, once again, automatically bind my Xbox controller, and everything should work right out of the box without doing anything at all. And now it's also set up so I can change it on Windows. You'd have different automatic bindings on Mac versus Windows versus Linux versus other stuff eventually. So this should still work, everything. We got, yep, okay, so I'm moving around with the normal joysticky thing. Now I'm moving with the D-pad. That's all good, and also lets me hold it all down. Good. Triggers don't do anything. L does but that button, but it's not bound anything. Well, none of these are bound yet. That's my meditate button. look like it did. What's up, Urban? It's going great, man. So, wait, where does it save bindings? There's something, it's in game CPP, where it Binding bindings. It saves all the bindings. It might be a separate method. It's game save binding, which also calls set gave the key val flush save game and set binding. Oh, so there's only a set binding function. We got to use that method. No, there's no, what? Save binding, oh, that's it, save binding. Code button player index. Okay, so back to here. And instead of input set binding, we're gonna use game, save binding. Code button player index, same exact code as that. And that will flush the save game each time as well. 
So this time when I run it, I should be able to control it with the Xbox controller and it will save findings for me. And it will save my game for me. So once again, yeah, we got controls are working fine. I'm not going to save my game right here because I think it already saved the settings. Yeah, you were doing the intro cutscene? That's right. Or I was? Yeah, I remember that. How you been, man? So, yeah, cool. It saved all the bindings. It saved it using codes, though. And codes are kind of an archaic system. These things, 6F, blah, blah, blah. Those can actually be the same code for two different kinds of controllers, so I need to make that saving work. But this whole system here is set up right. All I need to do is add in the PlayStation controller type now. So I'm going to hook up my PlayStation controller. And we'll set the automatic bindings for Mac. And then I'll check in this code. You've been working a lot. Good for you, man. Me too. I'm I'm in I'm in the phase of this game where it's almost it's in the last the last bit. Definitely the last quarter of this game's development. So um I'm working a lot too. A lot. But it feels good. It feels really good to work on something a lot and see it all progress and like um and just come to fruition. That's what's happening with Songbringer. This game's all coming to fruition. The fruits of fruition, man. The fruits. Oh, PlayStation Mac? We already started these, but we shouldn't have. Uh, so I'm going to get rid of these bindings. It just automatically did. And I think i got to restore my other bindings so I can have the PlayStation controller. Well, I think it's just 6E. Let's get a just 6E. This isn't going to use any automatic bindings. Okay, so let's see. Button left is axis one minus, and then right. And right is two. Wait, no. Uh, right is one plus. Okay, left one minus one plus. The D-pad does not work in Mac. I don't know why yet. It's some driver related, maybe. It does work on Windows, that's good news. So wait, so it was one minus was left, one plus was right. Up, up, left, right, down. I had an interesting thought. Any plans on releasing Songbringer on Apple TV? I think, um, is that, for Apple TV, don't they just, can't you just play uh, iPad and like iPhone apps on the Apple TV? I, don't even, I have no idea how that works. Because yeah, yeah, the the game's already coming to the app, the app store for iPad and iOS. They are separate apps, huh? They're different kind of apps, aren't they? Are they, do you know about them? Are they different than... Yeah, they're their own builds, right? But I'm, I would imagine that Apple's doing it so it's really not that difficult for you to change your app, your iPad or whatever app. But yeah, with a lot of overlap. Okay, that's what I would imagine. I don't, there's, there's well, of course, there, there's no official plans yet to support Apple TV for Songbringer. That's because I have never even considered it. But, um... I'll definitely look into this. I don't know what I'll, I don't know what I'll actually do. I mean, eventually, if Sombrier succeeds, I like to get it on every possible platform it can fit on. So, hopefully, we'll 
One neg, one pause. Different UI stuff too. Oh, oh, that's right, because that's a remote. Oh, I bet you it's kind of like a mouse then. Hmm. Which is similar to a touch on the touch screen. From a from a programming standpoint. Let's see, let's see what uh what's up and down. Up is two minus, down is two plus, two minus, two plus. Oh, the remote actually has a touchpad. A gyro. Oh. Wow. Are you making apps for the Apple TV right now? Or anything? I know you're working on your game. Your game engine and stuff. A, B, X, Y. Let's get these set up. Uh, no, that's not, this is not a new starting location. This is a different kind of uh, dungeon. This is dungeon three. Uh, okay, so that would be A is button two, B is button three, X is button zero, Y is button four. I gotta write these down. Button two is A. Button three is B. Button one is X. Button two is Y. Oh, no plans? Yeah, Mac, Windows, Linux? Cool. Me too. That's that's basically the focus for Songbringer. It's mostly just Mac, Windows, Linux. Everything else is kind of not the target platform per se, but something that it will kind of be ported to. I guess I should start at a different area because I need my sword, or I just can equip the lighter. Never mind. Let's get lighter. Bomb there. Top hat here. Cactus here. Cup. No, that's not something we can easily use. I guess L would be, R could be meditate, well, L should be meditate, and R can be blink there. Now I got a full complement of buttons I can test with. Mm, so A, B, X, Y, let's see if those worked. Oh wait, it's not going to bind those yet, never mind. We just set up L and R, and then select and start, and then test it. L is button 5. R is button six, it's five, six. And select is nine. Start is 10, so five, six, nine, ten. L is five. R is six. Select is nine, start is 10. And now I can delete my bindings. It'll automatically set some new ones for me. All right. Cool, it recognizes my controller as a PlayStation controller. It does not it did not set my my items though. Why did it take away the lighter, for example? Oh I don't have a lighter. No wonder. I have a blink orb though, it didn't equip that. Oh, because I have a blink too. Let's get the player the lighter and all that. It should have added bindings. Yeah, it did. Let's take them away. 
Lighter, we now have a lighter. How many blinks do we have? We have blink three. So let's quit blink three. Bad, all good. Uh, okay, it equipped the lighter that time, but still no blink orb. He's blink two that he wants. Why did the rebindings quit working? There, now we got a full host of buttons. X is my top hat like I intended. Or no, square was. That's right, that's all I want those to be bombs. Cactuses? Must have no cactuses. Oh, the blink's working now. Man, meditate. Okay, yeah, all the buttons are right. All right, Boogie, we'll see you, man. Okay, I'm ready to check this in, and I'm pretty much done for today's stream. Actually, I'm gonna I gotta get cooking dinner with my my girl here and do some Windows coding tonight. Get the, all the Windows defaults set in, but this is gonna be great to have the game, so it just automatically recognizes controllers rather than making you bind it all. So I wrote a new method called has bindings, which checks for any type of bindings for any type of controller. And an input type string, so it can be totally custom per platform. And then... Added some default bindings to the controllers. I know, right? Even better. Totally. Here's where it sets the automatic bindings. Just looks th looks through its, its available default bindings. And we've got a get generic code function. So there we go. That's all the code for doing automatic bindings. We'll make it even smarter about how it actually recognize or saves it too. Right now it saves it like this. You're like, what the hell is that? So I'm gonna make that smarter. So that will be something like Xbox controller Mac dot axis one positive equals button zero player zero or whatever. So that's what that that's what eventually will this will look like be better. So uh, yeah, that's it for today's stream. Thanks again for watching everybody and uh, probably be back tomorrow. Tomorrow I gotta remember to try out some new settings with game show. I'll try a compromise of 720p with 15 frames a second so that's what you guys got to look forward to the next time i stream anyways uh cheers everybody have a good day could you rig a midi controller yes you probably could urban yes you probably could you would do that with the manual binding so songbringer if it doesn't find automatic bindings it will actually tr it will you can manually bind anything it'll per it'll give you a picture of a controller and then you just press a certain button for it to map to that and so, yes, you, as long as your MIDI controller is sending out um, joystick or gamepad events, then yes, it will work. I don't know how MIDI controllers work exactly, whether they're actually sending joystick buttons or whether they're sending some other kind of buttons. So you might need to, you might need some kind of translator pro app or something like that that would translate a MIDI controller's buttons to um, to a, to a gamepad buttons. I don't know. So anyways, yeah, you might need an app, but um, I think it would, I think there's some way you could get it working, so.